Good morning, everyone. I'm Jim Jaquetta, CTO of Vitovation, and today I'm joined by my good friend and colleague, uh, Florian Colmer. He is a sales director for the US for Avi West. Um, he's more than just a sales director, he's a network engineer. Uh, he knows the Avi West uh, product line inside and out. So he's not your typical sales guy for sure. He, he, uh, uh, he designs systems, so um, uh, Florian is going to lay some knowledge on us today about uh, mobile journalism. So tell us a little bit about what you, we're going to talk about today, Florian. Welcome. So thank you, Jim, for the introduction. So the topic of today's webinar is mobile journalism. So especially during this time where everybody is is staying at home or trying to be alone alone in the normal life daily life alone in front of the camera alone managing the camera alone doing the production basically so today's webinar we explain how new solutions uh, are designed to do mobile journalism and one-man crew journalism as well so that's the subject of today's webinar uh, I will start with an introduction about what mobile journalism is, uh, what it can do, what you can do with those new technologies and products. And then we will go a bit more technical about uh, the Mojo Pro solutions by Avi West, uh, which products we can provide, uh, what the features they are, they are offering, or you can use them. And then I will talk a bit more about a very specific IP technology which is behind it and which is making it much more reliable and high quality for broadcasters, professional production company, freelance journalists, compared to standard video apps for smartphones you can easily find on, on, on the markets places like Apple Store or, or Google. Mm -hmm. Well, so Florian, I, I have a little little a poll, a little survey, but uh, I want to ask people, uh, do they use Mojo now? Maybe define what that is first so people know where we're coming from. If they're not familiar with, uh, you know, Mojo or the term mobile uh, journalism, may, maybe speak to that and then I can put the poll up. Sure. So mobile journalism is a way of producing live and recorded video content in an easy mobile and portable way using smartphone technologies. Uh, in most of the presentation, I will show pictures with smartphones, but of course, it could be using tablets as well. Uh, okay. Under okay. Tablets and smartphones, for, for, for example. Okay. So most of our users um, doing mobile journalism is synonymous of uh, one-man crew as well. It's not necessarily mandatory. You can still have a cameraman behind the smartphone, but usually it's a way to be alone in the field and being both the technical guy uh, managing the smartphone and the talent as well. Okay, okay. So well, I, I, I think you, you folks see that we put up the little, the little survey, so please, uh, We'd love to have your feedback if you can, that'd be great. Yeah, so that's a quick question to know if you have been already using mobile journalism or if you're planning to do so in the future, or if it's something you don't plan at all, maybe because it doesn't fit your, your business and workflow, or maybe because you think it's not yet reliable enough. And I hope at the end of this webinar, you will reconsider your position in that case as I will be introducing you um, new protocols and, and new products making this high quality and reliable for the broadcast quality production. Okay, okay. So here, here, here's some of the results. So uh, it looks like the majority of the uh, listeners uh, are, are planning to use, uh, they're not using it now, but they're planning to use it in the future. So uh, Florian and I, we'd love to help you with that. Uh, people that are using it already, we'd love to hear from you about what's working, what's not working, uh, how you use the technology. And then as Florian said, those that have no plans, maybe 
uh, we can help um, uh, 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 sway you uh, to 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 uh, uh, consider this type of technology. Or if if you don't want to do journalism from your cell phone, you know we have the more traditional uh, uh, camera mounted units, backpack mounted units, rack mounted units. So. Uh, um, uh, Mojo journalism is not the the only thing Abby West does. So um, yes, thank you, well, Florian. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank, you, thank you, thank you for 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 sharing with us, folks. We appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, right. That's this webinar is part of a season of webinar we are going to do almost every week, uh, introducing not only mobile journalism but new ways to produce live content for news, sports. Uh, entertainment contribution and, and so on but this particular one today is about mobile journalism uh, leveraging the use of smartphones and especially the improvement in, in new smartphones model released over the few past years so what is exactly mobile journalism mobile journalism is uh, being fully mobile having your phone and some accessories and being able to produce live and recorded content from everywhere um, the key advantages, except the cost, of course, because you are also saving on cost, but it's also to be able to be the first on location. So especially for news stations and especially 24-7 news, it's always key to be the first on location and report before your competitors, basically, uh, in a very efficient way. Another key thing about mobile journalism is also to be able to be more discreet. And uh, if you are especially covering some quite violent demonstrations, nowadays you can have more and more of the demonstrators and the public sometimes, unfortunately, being against the journalists. So using mobile journalism solutions uh, allows you to get directly in the crowd without looking like a big TV crew with a standard camera and a full set of equipment. So it's easier to be first on location, it's easier to be on the move and, and follow uh, whatever you are covering, and it's also allowing you to be considered as part of the, 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 the crowd. So it can be a demonstration, it can be a sports venue, an event, and, and so on. But what's key about mobile journalism, even if part of my and most of the presentation here will be technical about how to do it, the most important part of mobile journalism is journalism. So even if it's requiring the talent to be able to launch an app on a smartphone, make a, a few parameters and configuration, uh, the, the largest part of the job is definitely a journalistic job. And that's key because even if myself, for example, I'm very aware about how to use those uh, tools, I won't be able to make a, a, a good news report as I'm not a journalist. <laughs> me, me neither. Well, also my my camera operator skills are not the greatest. You know, a little shaky, a little jerky, right? But that's why we need the professionals. Yeah. So most of our uh, existing customers who have been deploying mobile journalism in their normal day uh, workflow have been training their journalists. Uh, not for journalistic skills, but for the technical skills to be able to operate the system by themselves. The app in, in their self on smartphones for Mojo are easy to use. What needs usually a training is how to set up everything with accessories, can be an external mic, a light, and so on, but also to be aware that shooting from a phone is not the same as shooting from a camera in terms of angles, watching the camera, and, and so on. So, what you can use mobile journalism products for? I've been talking a bit about news report. You can see here a standard setup on this picture about a news report in Paris. 
uh, but it's not only designed for news gathering it can also be used for spot production let's say you are covering a game you have broadcast cameras and production inside the venue you have professional cameras interviewing players or staff in the venue but then you want to add more content and have some immersive contents with fans for example outside the venue then you can give uh, smartphones and accessories to your journalists and talents so they can just interview fans outside the stadium provide some live large angle outside the venue of streets squares whatsoever you are to make the viewers feel that they are part of the event uh, it can be also uh, for entertainment uh, especially nowadays we are having more and more production company for tv shows all the um, uh, guests talents need to stay at home so they want to leverage their smartphones and uh, internet connection at home uh, to produce the show live with a less disruption uh, but more and more are thinking instead of moving all guests and crew and talents in a standard tv studio uh, they could leverage those technology to make that more and more remotely well, I, I imagine, Florian, too, that uh, a big a big trend right now is first responders. So uh, frontline firefighters, law enforcement, um, they might have a, a mobile command vehicle that will come, you know, a, several hours after a major incident. Uh, but but in the first moments, uh, a first responder could take their phone and start filming um, some of our sports clients. Um, because co production costs uh, are expensive. Uh, um, one of our, our, our sports customers, they'll use a more traditional backpack or camera mount unit as the primary feed, and then four or five cell phones as, as secondary feeds or B-roll. So like you say, Florian, you know, I see first responder sports, so not just journalism. So it's, it's mobile sports, it's mobile first responder. We'll have to make an acronym for those as well. <laughs> so yes, first responders is another use case, which is not journalism in this case, but allowing to have a, a high quality live video feed at a common center to be able to manage the team deployment in the field for, for EMS and so on. Um, so thanks to mobile journalism, it's not only faster and cost effective and one man crew to be on site but it's also easier unnoticed i've been as i've been mentioning you can get closer to um your guest as well uh, you probably know when you are going to interview some of someone in the street if you are using a broadcast camera with lights and so on people might get shy and won't be at the same way as if you are uh, producing and shooting with your smartphone because they are they are used to be taken in picture or, or video with smartphones so they will feel more comfortable and you will be closer to them yes yeah, it's, it's less less intimidating it's it's more casual more casual right so here are a few pictures about um, use cases of mobile journalism so the one at the bottom left is a newspaper in France, and that's a public article on their website in which they are showing or they are covering the elections thanks to Mojo Pro applications. Um, then you can see on the right side two kind of uh, workflows. The bottom right is uh, using a standard tripod for a news report. And I guess this one was a kind of demonstration because he's in front of police operations here. And on the top right, just carrying the camera in hand for, for, for news as well. And that's for a regional station in the southwest of France. So that's the way our customers are, are using uh, Mojo Pro solutions. So, as you can see in those pictures, and I have a few more to show you, 
most of the users uh, uh, are alone in front of the camera. So that's a big trend with mobile journalism is also to feature a one-man crew. And this is giving you a, a big advantage because if you are covering events like elections, it means you will be able to deploy your crew and cover more locations or cover more events. Or if it's for, for sports, you will be able to produce more live content, interview more fans, more players, have more live videos, hangers from, from the venue and, and so on. And this way it will enrich your content and enriching your production will gather more users and more audience, of course, which is key for you and the most important thing. So, as you may have seen on some of the previous pictures, none of the users with mobile journalism are using their smartphone alone. What you will need for mobile journalism is a bunch of accessories depending on what you are doing and producing. So if it's stand-up news, you might put your phone on a tripod. Uh, if you are mobile, you might need a, a smartphone stabilizer, a gimbal. Um, you will generally need an external microphone to have better audio. Uh, you might need some additional lights, especially if you are shooting in the dark. And of course, you will need a dedicated app on your phone, like the Mojo Pro uh, software app by Avivest. Most of the solutions and the one I'm showing here are working on any kind of smartphone, so you can use your iPhone, Android phones and tablets as well. So here is an example of a different kind of accessories you can use along with the phone to make the video quality better and professional. So what's key when you are producing from a phone is to have a stable picture. So you will need either a, a tripod, a gimbal, a grip to be able to produce a stable video picture. Then you can see some light as well, some audio. You will need an external mic, can be a wireless one. Uh, if you are doing duplex interviews, you will also need an earpiece as well. Uh, to be able to have a return audio feed from, from the station, for example. Some additional lightning as well. And here are some of the brands you can shop for this kind of accessory. So that's really depending on uh, each production workflow, what you need, and also what your journalist and talent prefer to use as well. So most of the end users are usually choosing um, some of these, those accessories depending on the content and, and what they are used to. So let's go a bit more about the Mojo Pro. So the Mojo Pro is the core of your mobile journalism production. It's the app running on any iOS and Android device, which will allow you to do mobile journalism. So here you have a screenshot of the main uh, screen at, on the Mojo Pro app. From this app, you can do uh, live video transmission, you can record content, you can forward any kind of material, you have a, a, an intercom solution as well for duplex intercom, uh, you have a mission-centric workflow, I will explain more about this one, and you can edit some video content as well. So it means it's a Swiss knife to produce your daily content as a journalist. So you can do live reports at 8 p.m., for example. You can record some content during the day. You can push all your recorded files, your production you might have been doing, and you have some editing capabilities. So you can add a logo and so on. I will speak more about this later. And, and push your, your, this to post-production. So the idea is to have all the features you might need in a single, easy to use app. So here you can see an example about the phone with a grip, light, and, and, and standard accessories. 
the Mojo Pro app is capable of supporting all kind of uh, resolutions, frame rates for video, and any bitrate for audio as well. It's capable of encoding video in variable bitrate to adjust to the cellular networks from the lowest 100 kilobit per second up to high quality 10 megabit per second. And all this with a low latency as its key, especially for, for duplex news. So here you can see on the main screen when you are live, uh, this is a professional app. So it doesn't look like a, a, a normal video app for smartphones with a one button operation. It's very easy to use, but you have access to advanced features to do manual focus, white balance, zoom, ISO. You can display a grid as well. So you you will find most of the main features you could have on a professional camera. And of course, you can leverage the fact that on many smartphones you now you have multiple cameras, so you can choose between the back and front camera. That's very convenient if you are interviewing guests as well, so you can switch between shooting yourself and shooting your guests and you will take benefit of ultra-wide cameras on the latest iPhones and Android phones as well um, from here. So you can select uh, the camera from the interface here. And then you also have all the audio parameters you can adjust here. So, uh, sorry. This one is about video as well first. So you can adjust manually your zoom, your setting, lights uh, from the app as well. Next part is about audio. So I've been mentioning earlier that most of the end users are using an external mic for a better audio uh, channel as well. So you can choose from the app if you want to use the internal uh, mic, the, an external one, a Bluetooth mic as well. So this is configurable as well. And you can, of course, adjust the audio level from, from the interface, from the UI here. You can configure the audio bitrate, the mode, and everything. So that's an app offering advanced features for video and audio. Then it's a one button operation. Basically, as soon as you have been setting up everything the first time, uh, you can just start and stop your, your live transmission. And what's key as well on this app is that you can do live and record at the same time. So that's key, especially if you are in a difficult uh, cellular environment outside, for example, and you have a low network bandwidth, you can still record the video and transmit it later on to the station. Now, I, I notice on this screen, Florian, you, you see the icon that shows you uh, cellular and Wi-Fi. I, gu I guess you'll come to that uh, yes, will, on the next slide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will come to that next. Uh, just to finish with the, the interface, I've been talking about uh, live and, and record. And of course, then you have a feature to forward your material uh, to the station. So you can record video clips in the app and then you can push them to the station. You will have a file queue in the app and it will forward your material to the, to the station here. So, how to make it reliable? Because you are fully aware if you are doing live using app like Facebook Live or, or standard general public app on your smartphone, uh, it's going to work only if you have a reliable internet connection. So you will need a reliable Wi-Fi or you will need a reliable 4G or you will be need to be alone on 4G uh, for this to be robust. And that's uh, the core of the Avi West technology here. We have been integrating our bonding protocol into the app, like in our professional hardware-based video encoders. So as you can see on this uh, slide, 
we have been doing low-level development on iOS and Android, so it's possible to activate simultaneously the 3G, 4G modem from your phone with the Wi-Fi. The idea is that you can bond cellular and Wi-Fi, of course, especially, for example, if you are at home or in an office or in a building, you can take benefit of the local Wi-Fi as well. But then if you are outside in the field, you can take the opportunity of using an external 4G hotspot or a second smartphone as a hotspot uh, to bond two cellular connections together. So in the United States, for example, you can have a Verizon SIM in your phone, carry a small AT&T router in your pocket or a second smartphone on AT&T, and you can bond two cellular carriers simultaneously. That will give you more bandwidth, of course, and it will be much more reliable. On the other end of the workflow, and that's something I haven't, I haven't been mentioning yet, so if you are not familiar with AviWest products now, I need to talk about it a bit more, is a stream up receiver. To take benefit of this bonding technology, you need a dedicated receiver at the other end. This receiver is called the stream hub, uh, as it's not only a receiver, it's a full platform to receive, decode, and distribute your live and recorded material. It can be hosted on premises if you are a traditional broadcast or production environment and you need SDI into your production workflow, then it can be hosted in your studio, or it can be hosted in the cloud if you just need IP content, IP feeds, and if you are only working on social media, for example. But it's the exact same solution and it's offering the same features whereas it is on premises or in the cloud, except of course the SDI hardware output which is available only on premises. Right, A AWS does, doesn't have SDI out yet. That's, the cloud sorry. has no SDI out. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it will have NDI out, but very soon. Uh, but that's the topic of another webinar. Um, right. And from this stream up, and it's, it's key at least to speak a little bit about it because it's the other part of the workflow. From there, you have a lot of features to decode, distribute, uh, and monitor your content, like this multi-view feature allowing you to have multiple smartphones on a single stream of appliance. So, why bonding multiple networks? As, been, as I've been mentioning, if you are doing live with using a standard smartphone app for live video, you probably experienced video freezes, bad quality macro blocks like on the picture on the left. And that's going to happen most of the time if you don't have a 100% high bandwidth and reliable uh, connection. Using the heavy West bonding technology, it's going to provide not only more bandwidth by bonding to connections, but it's also providing a more robust uh, link. And that's what I will explain more in details on this slide. So this technology is called SST for Safe Stream Transport. It's a proprietary protocol we have been developing in-house at Avi West for almost 12 years now. And we just won two Emmy Awards in a row in 2018 and 2019 for this particular technology. It's a big move for live video production worldwide and it's the first time you can have a really robust video transmission professional quality over unmanaged IP networks and unreliable IP networks like uh, cellular, like public Wi-Fi or public uh, landline connections. So the way SST is working, it's not only a bonding technology capable of bonding any kind of IP connections together, but it's also providing advanced mechanism like two-dimension forward error correction, uh, packet retransmission, packet reordering, uh, and also the key part of this technology is to be able to control the video encoders to do variable bitrate encoding to adjust in real time to the total bandwidth available on all your network links. And it's also doing dynamic resolution, so it's really robust from the lowest 100 kilobit per second to the highest 10 megabit per second. 
And that's a combination of all those features and capabilities which will make this robust. It's not only the encoding, not only the AIFQ or APC mechanism, not only the bonding which can make this robust. It's a combination of all those together. So, so Florian, a, a common question that we get is, um, you know, why not why not use SRT or RIST? Um, um, you know, what 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 are some of the differences? So that's a very good question, Jim, and, I, and I'm sure some of the people in the audience uh, are asking the same thing. Um, SRT and, and RIST are other uh, video transport protocols which are doing AIQ, doing forward error correction, but they are much less robust than SST, and they are working fine only on fiber connections, high speed and robust connection. So they can cope with a few percent of packet losses, but uh, the SST protocol here can cope with a much higher percentage, 20%, 30% of packet losses. And the other main reason, and probably the primary reason, is that SST is doing bonding between multiple links. If you are using any kind of the other IP protocols available on the market, they are relying on a single link. So even if they are implementing some kind of ARQ and FEC, if this link is getting down or if the congestion is this, is this link is increasing, then there is no way to get a robust and reliable transmission. So that's uh, the bonding part of the SST transport protocol, which is definitely key. And as a broadcaster and production company, when you are doing live and producing live content, you can't rely on a single unmanaged IP connection. That's definitely a choice you should not make uh, because you cannot provide a professional live content or production relying on a single 4G connection or a single public Wi-Fi from your local McDonald's. Well, I think people underestimate the difficulty in doing bonding and doing it properly. Um, SRT or RIST might have a simple failover mechanism. If one circuit goes down, it fails over to another. But the, the the really challenging part is the cellular, right, Florian? That that the cellular is very unpredictable. Latencies change constantly. Throughput changes, bandwidth yeah. changes, uh, um, um, and and RIST and SRT are just not built to deal with that. Correct? Yes, right. And I, I think all, all our guests today are, are already aware about bonding technology and the difference between bonding and failover. Uh, but just in case, failover is completely different. It's just an easy way to use multiple SIM cards, but it's just using a single SIM at the same time. So it won't provide a higher bandwidth, so it won't provide you a higher video quality. And then when one link will fail, the time to recover on another SIM will always generate a, a freeze in your video. And even if it's recovering well, when you are doing a professional broadcast production, you can't afford to have freezes in your live feed. Right. So that's why it's always important to consider having all those mechanisms. You have a few bonding solutions available on the market which are only focused on the network side, and then you plug whatever encoder you can find on the market, but it's not going to work as good as with the SST protocol because here with the SST technology, the network part, the bonding part, is also in real-time communication with the video encoder to right. adjust the rate and resolution to the available bandwidth on the networks. Yeah, I, 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 me and my team, we tell them people that every day that Avi West is a closed system. So like you said, Florian, a customer will be like, well, I have a low cost encoder. I have a, a cradle point uh, cellular device with a couple of modems. Then I have a third vendor's decoder. Those three appliances don't talk to each other. It's not a closed system. So the SST is, it really is, is uh, uh, part of SST is the coupling between the encoder, the SST and the decoder, right? Yeah, and that's 
all those parts together which are making this high quality and reliable. And that's the reason why we managed to get those two Emmy Awards in a row. <laughs> right. It's, right. it's because right. it's difficult to develop all this together. Right. Uh, not necessarily difficult to make a failover between two SIM cards. It's not necessarily difficult to make packet retransmission, but it's a combination on all those features on unreliable networks. Because keep in mind that this is designed not only to be used on cellular when you are alone in your backyard. It's really designed to be used on cellular when you are in a venue with thousands of people using their smartphones. And that's right. a because if you are testing it at home or in your office uh, with a good internet connection, then of course it's going to work fine and all the solutions might be working okay as well. But then if you are bringing it to your football game during the game, then uh, if you don't use this SST solution, it won't probably be working at all. So, most of this webinar is about um, the Mojo Pro and the smartphone part, but as you have been clearly uh, pointing out, Jim, is that it's a closed system which needs a receiving hand as well. So the other hand, the receiving hand, is called the streamer, as I've been quickly mentioning during the introduction. Uh, this is your decoder and distribution platform. Um, it's an hardware and software or software-based platform depending on your workflow, which can be in your master control or in your studio environment, uh, or it can be hosted in the cloud as well. Uh, just quickly, if you host it in your studio, it's a one you server box you just put in your server room. So then everything is managed with a web-based interface. You can see a small screenshot here. What is the streamer offering? It's not only a decoder, it's a, a full uh, transceiving platform. So you can monitor, you can remotely control your smartphones, uh, you can adjust all configuration from this web-based interface. Then it can decode your video over SDI, it can transcode your video for distribution. An example, let's say you have a variable bitrate coming in from the smartphone, you need a constant 3 meg bitrate output for your decoder or your uh, social media. Those transcoding capabilities are built in uh, the StreamUp solution. Then, of course, it can record any incoming feed as well. It can playback videos. And what's key, and I didn't start with, but I should, is that with a single StreamUp appliance, you can receive up to 16 incoming live feeds. So the screenshot is a bit small here, but on the left-hand side of the interface on the UI, you've got 16 input channels. So if you are covering elections, for example, you can have 16 smartphones in the field live simultaneously on a single stream of uh, solution. It's also capable of receiving any third-party IP feed. So you can receive an MPEG-TS feed like a standard decoder. You can receive RTMP or HLS from the internet. And you can receive SRT as well from a standard SRT encoder, for example. Yeah, I, I should mention, Florian, that that uh, Avi West is part of the SRT consortium, and and we'll I think in a, in the, the next webinar see, uh, later in the series you'll talk more about that. That you know SRT is so so prominent that the 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 latest version of the Stream Hub has SRT IP inputs and SRT IP outputs. To interface right. with the rest of the world, NDI is coming. Um, I believe RIST is on the roadmap as well, right, Florian? Right, and um, that's that's a good point, Jim. And uh, a question which can be raised is why is Avi West part of the SRT Alliance and implementing SRT after I've been explaining of, about the advantages? Right, of right, right, right. So let me answer this one because it's a, it's a very good question, and and I need to be clear on that. Um, the SST technology and the AV West technology and what we are working on is move live video over unmanaged networks, unmanaged IP networks. And it's offering a perfect gateway between the managed world and the unmanaged world. So if you are in a venue in your stadium, you can just connect wired your cameras to a switcher, for example, 
or you can receive uh, in your production environment an SRT feed or an NDI feed and it's going to work fine if you are on a private network or a dedicated uh, internet connection. But then if you want to go public on cellular networks or public Wi-Fi, which is giving you access to, um, to everywhere and being much more mobile and cost-effective, then you need to have this SST protocol in between. So it's a, it's a, it's, it can be seen as a gateway yeah. between managed yeah. and unmanaged yeah. networks. So for example, you can get an SST or multiple SST live feeds from your field and remote location into mm -hmm. your station and then get SRT locally uh, on your dedicated IP network, of course, and have SRT for distribution to social media, for example. So, so that, I, I, ha I have some good uh, uh, questions, uh, Florian. So, so a common question we get is, um, and you kind of answered it already, why do I need the stream hub? That, that um, why can't I, you know, take my phone or my field encoder and go directly to my generic IRD, my generic decoder? Um, we need the stream, yeah, well, uh, yeah. We need the stream hub to, right? Yeah, you you kind of yeah. said it already. So that's uh, that's uh, that's a good question, and the easy answer is because your IRD is not supporting SST yet. Right, right, <laughs> right. That's is a point. As we start working with some third-party companies uh, like Dalet, EVS, AV. Um, with Vodalis and some other companies to integrate our SST protocol directly into the solutions. And then in that case, it means you can stream straight from your phone to uh, your production environment. So that's something we are working on now to integrate this SST technology uh, into a third party workflow and your production environment. Uh, yeah, so so, so the, the part of the magic of SST is, you know, Avi West is taking the IP video stream and putting it over eight, up to eight cellular modems, uh, LAN connections, Wi-Fi, 11 or 12 connections. Something needs to put those packets back together to bond everything back together. And a generic IRD can't do that. So you need to hit an Avi West stream hub first, then we can uh, output generic IP um um rtmp srt uh rtsp etc uh to a generic ird right and to explain a bit more because um sometimes some of our end users are saying okay but i can't install a stream IB in my own environment or i don't want to take care about this part uh, this can be in the cloud this can be provided as a transparent service and invisible and then it's providing IP streaming output using standard protocol. So th thank you for the introduction on that, Jim, because yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. part I want to explain. So you got 16 input channels into your stream up solution. You got SDI outputs if you got it on premises. And you have IP streaming outputs up to 16 per stream up, supporting all standard protocols. So MPEG-TS, if you want to get it into your standard IRD, for example. Uh, RTMP, if you want to get it into Facebook or YouTube, for example, SRT, mm -hmm. an SRT decoder, or SRT production workflow. We are working on implementing NDI as well uh, to get into your production. And if you don't want to host the streamer, it can be hosted in the cloud. We are providing that as a service. We can pre-configure it to get the standard IP feed back into your workflow. So that would be fun. And if you if you have SRT uh, from the cloud, if you have a good internet connection in your master control, SRT is good enough to go from the cloud to your master control. Or many customers just use RTMP, uh, um, um, something even without FEC or ARQ. Uh, right. If there's a good internet connection, it will work. So so there's an application of um, SST is used from the field encoder or the mobile device from, from the field to get to the cloud or to get to master control. But then the, the stream hub 
because it's uh, transcoding. Well, here's another important feature too. Like uh, with bonded, we, we use HEVC, but uh, social media and older IRD don't support HEVC yet. So uh, that, that's a powerful feature you have too, Florian, the, the transcoding capability. Um, you know, Facebook Live won't take an HEVC uh, signal. We have to transcode to H.264, correct? Uh, Facebook is supporting HEVC now, but some of the social media are still relying on H.264. But you're right, yeah. that's really to, to explain that the StreamUp is a full platform uh, which can receive any feed and can output any uh, standard protocol. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. a kind of an AmiNi here. And we start having some users deploying the StreamUp as a standalone product for content sharing and distribution. But that's the subject of another webinar we are planning. Yes, yes, we don't want to we don't want to spoil the surprise <laughs> of some of the other webinars, right? So, so that's the StreamUp, and quickly because you saw that screenshot in one of the previous slides, uh, the StreamUp can generate a multi-viewer as well, so you can have a four by four multi-view. Uh, using the 16 input channels. So when I've been mentioning, it can be in the cloud and or it can be a physical hardware appliance in on premises. So that's about the stream up, but we will have some other webinars dedicated to that. So that's um, something important as well. Uh, if you are a large broadcaster or you have a large production environment, and you are deploying hundreds of smartphones. Then it can be difficult to configure all of them, to install the Mojo Pro app on all of them. So our Mojo Pro solution is compatible with MDM uh, workflows. MDM stands for Mobile Device Management. And you are probably aware about this technology if you are working in a large company and they are giving you a company smartphones you might be locked on your phone and not able to install the app you want or change the parameters as you want. That means your company phone is locked to an MDM system. Uh, that's the bad part of it if you want to play with your phone. But <laughs> the good part of it is if you are deploying the Mojo Pro solution on a large fleet of smartphones for all your journalists, freelancers, and, and so on, uh, you can benefit of this tool to deploy the app on all your smartphone in a row and deploy your configuration as well. So this way, you and users won't have to configure the smartphone app by themselves, but they won't be able to change their parameters to something you don't want. So that's MDM. So you have both options with the Mojo Pro. You can even either do basic deployment, you set up the app from the store, you do the configuration manually the first time you run it and you are live. Or it can be deployed by your MDM system. So that's here just a few examples of uh, uh, companies using our Mojo Pro uh, solution. So it can be local station, as you can see WPSD in the US here. Uh, Check TV in Canada, they are near Vancouver. Uh, a regional station, and you have like uh, major stations in, in Europe. You can see here France, Germany, and Belgium. Uh, CNN in Brazil is massively relying on our Mojo Pro, and you might have seen in the news some large news productions they have been doing in Latin America using uh, smartphones. And of course, we do have other customers in Latin America, for example, as well. You can see in Africa, in the Middle East, in Asia. So this solution is really used widely now for news, for entertainment, for sport production as well. And it's um, opening new gates for new kind of productions as well, uh, as I've been mentioning before. So if you have been considering like uh, some of the answers we, we, we get at the beginning during the introduction, if you have been considering using a Mojo Pro solution in your workflow, but you have been still hesitating about all reliabilities or would be the quality, um, you, you can really consider it now because it's being widely uh, used by tier one TV stations. 
Uh, we have, for example, the public broadcaster in France now. Uh, they are they have been launching some station relying entirely on smartphones. They have trained all their journalists, and all the live and recorded content is being done with smartphones. So that's well, really. You, I should I should mention too, Florian. You already said this. It may be redundant, but. If someone is concerned about reliability, that that recording button is very important. That uh, if if you try to go live and Master Control says, "Hey, that segment was a little choppy," you can push the recorded uh, uh, I, uh, story near live. A few minutes after you shoot it, it could be in Master Control, um, uh, re ready to be aired. Right. Right. That's a good point as well. Yeah. And something I haven't been mentioning during this webinar, but it, it's key, and we start seeing more and more uh, production company doing that. You can do a multi camera production using only smartphones. Uh, so it can be a, a standard TV set, you put multiple smartphones, and you are doing switching uh, remotely. Uh, so that's at home production with multi camera smartphone, um, multi smartphones. What's key in this uh, use case, if you are doing a multi-camera remote production, you have a very important thing, the same with a standard hardware camera and with smartphones. For remote production, all your feeds need to arrive perfectly gen-locked in your right. product feature if you want to switch between cameras. And that's the part of the SST protocol I haven't been mentioning because it wasn't the primary thing on this webinar. But apart from the bonding ALQ FEC, the SST protocol is also providing a gen lock over IP feature, which means all your live feeds from all your phones will be perfectly gen locked at the station, and it's frame accurate. Yeah, you, we we found that uh, some of our competitors claim they can do it. Um, you know, they're they're uh, you know anywhere from a dozen frames to many frames. Uh, uh, off that uh, we've done some big projects with Turner Sports where we've brought uh, 16 to 20 ISO camera feeds all the way from Europe, all the way from Paris to Atlanta, and uh, everything was frame accurate, um, uh, Genlock and frame accurate lip sync uh, with, with any other platform wasn't possible. Um, um, you know, even sports, you know, the cameras are relatively static in a fixed position. We're able to maintain the gen lock uh, in, in speeding police vehicles uh, and keep, the, keep the, 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 the frame accurate gen lock and lip sync uh, even in, in challenging and changing environments. Um, right. and, 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 that, it's, and that's something key as well with uh, Mojo Pro Solutions. We have been mostly showing standalone one camera solution and, and, and workflow. But of course, you can do multi-smartphone production for news, uh, entertainment. So if you have a remote studio or venue uh, with two, three guests, you can just put multiple smartphones on a tripod and do remote production and switching with that. In this particular COVID-19 situation, you can do that as well. If you are a news uh, presenter from home, uh, you can, of course, uh, have a single smartphone and a single point of view, but you could mm -hmm. also use multiple smartphones at home and your crew at the station or remotely can switch from one phone to the other and they are perfectly gen locked together. Right. So that's a way to be producing alone and to be confined at home under lockdown. You can just steal all the smartphones from your children. No, you can't do that. I'm joking. <laughs> And no, much. some of some of them are yeah, yeah, the um, uh, Jimmy Fallon's talk show. He's got his kids and his wife shooting uh, shooting him at home. They're they're not producing that show live, but uh, they could they could very well be live if they used AVS technology. Right, <laughs> that's that's one thing you can achieve with uh, the Mojo Pro app. <laughs> Just to finish with. Um, a few books. Uh, if you are interested, of course, you can get in touch with Jim and, and myself, and we'll be pleased to give you more information. But if you have time to spend, you can uh, find some literature. There are quite a lot of literature about 
uh, mobile journalism now, social media and storytelling. That's a few examples uh, of books you can find in the market. So, uh, well, I'll continue, Florian. I, I have a question. You, you, you okay. can finish up and then I'll ask. Okay. Yeah, well, uh, that's the last slide and, and we can go on for questions. Uh, just quickly, that's two of my colleagues. So I'm the sales director in charge of the US at Avi West. Ronan on the left is our CTO and one of the co-founders. And Samuel is uh, one of our CDO product manager, especially in charge of uh, Mojo Pro solutions, for example. And you are welcome to get in touch with them directly if you want more information as well and if you have any uh, technical question. Very good, very good. Well, one, I, I think we, we talked about this uh, yesterday, Florian. Um, yeah, you, you, you see uh, Abby West contact information. Here's Vitovation's contact information. Uh, you can uh, call our New York or our California offices, uh, drop us an email. Um, I think today's webinar, maybe Florian, was more about going live. Um, that if you're, uh, uh, sometimes your workflow is to send a fully produced video clip to, to production, to master control. So I think maybe we miss some of those features that uh, a, a very powerful part of uh, uh, the Mojo Pro app is the ability to do a voiceover. You can record, bring up a recorded file and be like, well, the audio is kind of muddled or you're doing a B-roll shot and you want to speak over it, you can do a voiceover. You can add your, your corporate logo, put your little, little bug in the corner of the feed, and then you can even put some, some simple text uh, over it. Is there something else that I'm forgetting? I, I, I think those, uh, uh, if you're not going live, that could be very powerful. Yeah, that's the main editing features. You're right. We haven't been mentioning that a lot during this webinar, not much just during the introduction. But the idea is that you can, of course, do live record forward files, but you can also do video editing with logos, graphics, banners, uh, audio levels, voiceover. You can adjust the audio part. You can have multiple clips, crop them, put some pre roll post roll banners. So the idea is that during your normal working day as a journalist you can record interviews of people you can produce your your, your news report and then you can do a live uh, on air yeah. so okay. all this okay. Is the same app. okay 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 um anybody have any uh questions let me see i i've been answering the questions as as they come um there was one one good question about um um how how's the software work? Is it hardware based? So um, I I I answered this question myself. The, the Mojo Pro is uh, is a, is a software app, but the Pro the, the the rest of the field unit portfolio, whether it's the Pro, the, you know, the camera mounted unit or the backpack unit or the Air, uh, the smaller unit, the belt, the shoulder mount or the belt uh, unit or the HE. Uh, 4K uh, encoder or the rack family of rack mount encoders. Those are all hardware based. And then the Stream Hub software is uh, Linux based. Maybe talk about you know how it's Dockerized, Florian. Um, uh, typically, we provide it on a super micro server or in the cloud on AWS or VMware. Maybe speak a little bit to some of the uh, yeah. Stream Hub configurations. That's the subject of one of our other webinars, but I can make a quick introduction on this. Um, so I've been mentioning that the StreamUp technology can be integrated in a third-party workflow. That's not only installing a software on a virtualized platform in the cloud. We are providing this technology, StreamUp technology, as a Docker container. So if you are familiar with Docker technology, it helps you to integrate a piece of software into your existing environment and it's highly scalable okay okay yeah. okay so that's um um y y you're integrating with uh you know third party workflows and that's how you do it that you add this docker or you add this software module 
to this other vendor's uh, uh, workflow, and now it adds uh, SST and it adds the Avi West workflow to these other vendors' uh, mm -hmm. workflows. Are, are you? I think you mentioned uh, a few of them. Do you? I don't know if I, maybe we'll talk more about it in, in other in other webinars. But some of the the, the companies that Avi West is partnering with already. Uh, yeah, but that's definitely the subject of another webinar because okay, I, okay, we don't want we don't want to. So you, you, you folks, if you haven't done so already, there's there's three more uh, webinars. Please register for those. Um, there was a common question about uh, how do I get a recording. Um, anyone who has registered, we will email you a copy uh, of of today's uh, webinar, uh, the video content, and we'll have the uh, content available in our blog for you to uh, register to download. Uh, but if you're already registered, you'll get all the content for sure. Right. And um, of course, if you have any question, you can just get in touch uh, with Jimoth or myself. Um, and we will be pleased to answer. We can also uh, schedule a conference call with you to give you more information and a technical solution for your particular requirements. So I just right, right. this slide if you if you want my contact details, you can just give me a call or, or send me an email as well as as Jim and We we so, uh, we we have a webinar the next two Wednesdays, the third Wednesday the thirteenth at the same time, uh, ten uh, uh, Pacific, uh, one p.m. Eastern. Uh, on the 13th and the 20th, and then we skip the 27th because that's a holiday week, and then we're back uh, June 3rd uh, with the final of the four uh, webinars. So uh, uh, there's a lot of good information we will be covering. We kind of foreshadowed some of that. So thank you all very much for attending today. We hope you are all uh, staying safe, staying healthy, uh, maybe we'll see you at NAB New York. Hopefully that trade show won't be canceled, but uh, um, you can, we can do a go-to meeting and we can do a virtual meeting. Florian will join us from France and we hope to see you in person uh, sometime soon. So thank you so much, Florian, for sharing your knowledge with us today. Thank you everyone for attending. Uh, have a great day. Thank you. Thank you everybody.